Coming up, a baby's life hung in the balance until answered prayer delivered a Christmas miracle. Well, welcome to 700 Club Canada, and we've been having a great week together. Yes, we sure have. And I just so appreciate uh, learning your life story. And I know sometimes in our stories, we have these transformational moments. And mm -hmm. for me to, you know, really experience living out my faith, mm -hmm. it, it came to being almost on the edge, you know what yeah. I mean? Like yeah. sometimes we have to be pushed to the edge in our mm -hmm. life where we're like, am I actually gonna trust God? Mm -hmm. Because I know that when I was a teacher and when I felt God leading me out of teaching, it's kind of scary because I've been yeah. a teacher for 21 years. Mm -hmm. So I just really got to the point where like, I'm actually gonna take the leap. I had no idea what was gonna come after this, you know, years of teaching. And, but it was a leap of faith that when I trusted God, he was right there for me. Mm -hmm. And I know you've experienced that as well. Yes, in fact, well, my family and I, um, the Lord told my husband that um, he was supposed to quit his job, and he's like, oh, no, oh, no. Uh, yeah. So he got trained to become a manager, and then they relocated to Winnipeg. Oh. And so we had to trust God for everything wow. for six months, and boy, did God ever come through. <laughs> That's when you know your faith is real, when you're right yeah. on the edge or yeah. right in the middle of the unknown. Yes. Well, at first, baby okay. Caleb receives the ultimate Christmas gift, the gift of life. Watch this. Marissa and Kale Waddleton were enjoying the Labor Day weekend at a beach house near Savannah, Georgia, when their three-month-old baby, Caleb, developed breathing problems. You know, I kept saying to myself, everything's fine. You know, he's just either teething, has a cold, maybe he's got asthma, um, but something was telling me otherwise. They decided to take Caleb to an urgent care center near their home in Covington, Georgia. The doctor walks in, looks over him and says, I don't like that. I don't like the way he's breathing. And so multiple people started coming in, doing all kinds of tests. An abnormal EKG gave the doctor even more reason for concern. She took us back to the room and looked at us and said, there's something wrong with your baby's heart. And he needs to go to the hospital as soon as possible. We fell to the floor crying. But I still figured medicine could cure it. You know, just get him to the hospital, get him on medicine. Caleb was medevaced to Children's Healthcare of Atlanta at Eggleston. When Marissa and Kale arrived at the hospital, they learned he was in stable but critical condition. A child's on a ventilator, struggling for his life. I mean, there's no words to describe. We're all can even to see in that. Dr. Shri Prasad Deshpande was a key part of Caleb's medical team. Caleb came to us with very common symptoms of heart failure, which are often missed initially. Because we don't think of heart failure in little babies, the heart would have continued to deteriorate, and more importantly, the rest of the organs would have continued to deteriorate. Kale and Marissa knew they needed God's help and called Kale's uncle to come pray with them. And we went down to the chapel and just put it all in God's hands. <laughs> because we just wanted our baby better. <laughs> because we knew we couldn't do it. So it was out of our control. The heart function was poor enough that even on medications, there was really no improvement seen. And our only option may be a transplantation at that point. Caleb was put on the waiting list, but they didn't know how long it would be to find a suitable heart for the infant. Through friends and social media, Kale and Marissa put out calls for prayer for their baby boy. I mean, we had like 15,000 followers on Facebook. People would text me prayers, just, hey, we're thinking about you, praying, sending me quotes, you know, Bible verses and all that, and just and giving us hope. It just went crazy with the prayers and people reaching out to us, and it just really, it really, really, really helped. As they waited, weeks turned into months. And it was tough, um, you know, because we prayed every day for that heart to come. And it just, you know, there was no sign of anything. Caleb was always just happy. This can be, his heart rate would be astronomical, but he was always smiling. It was exhausting, mentally exhausting. Very much of a roller coaster. It has good days and then there was bad days and it was you take one step forward and there's three steps back 
Then, on December 3rd, they got the call that a potential heart had become available. When it was confirmed to be a match, baby Caleb was taken into surgery. There's no words to describe handing your baby over, knowing they're going to take the heart out of his body. Because I'm a big car guy. You take the motor out of a car, put a new one in it, and sometimes it don't crank right back up. And that's the only thing I'm thinking. You put the heart in, but if it don't start beating, then I don't have a little boy. So we just, you know, had to pray, like, please be a perfect heart for Caleb. Let that heart be Caleb's heart. The transplant was a success, and Kale and Marissa knew their prayers had been answered. You walk in, and he's got the prettiest little skin complexion. His lips were pink. It was just knew we were on the road to recovery. The new heart woke up very appropriately, very healthy, and has stayed very healthy, more importantly. We went home seven days later on December 11th. Being home for Christmas was, it was great. Just a blessing to be home. Today, Caleb is still healthy, growing, and showing no signs of slowing down. This and every Christmas, Hale and Marissa are grateful for God's wonderful gift. He is definitely a reminder that God heals, God fixes. He, you know, takes a very sick child and makes them new again. I mean, he, he can do that, and he did. Our prayers were, thank you, thank you, thank you. And it just totally changed our whole family's outlook on life. You can't give up, and you can't lose your faith. You have to keep praying and never stop. Trusting God and knowing that he is there for you, everything will be okay. I don't know about you, Adia, but I think it's easier to go through things yourself than mm -hmm. to watch your child go through Yes, them. yes. And one of the thoughts that came to me was, in order for that child to have a new heart, someone had to die. Yes. And so it is with Jesus. Yes. In order for us, for our hearts to be transformed, he had had to die. I mean, I'm choked yeah. up uh, because that's so much he loved us. Yeah. He gave himself so that we can have not a broken heart anymore, but a heart that is whole and mended. A brand new heart. Brand new. The old is gone, new. the new has come. Yes. This is the gospel. This is the truth of mm -hmm. what Jesus does. And I just yeah. love that. And you know, I think no matter what you're going through, you know that Jesus can make all things new. Absolutely. He can redeem the broken seasons. Mm -hmm. He can redeem the years where scripture says the locusts have stolen. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, you and I have both experienced that in our life. Mm -hmm. Uh, so if you're going through that, I can assure you that God is a God of redemption. Amen. And Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 is probably one of my favorite verses. One of mine too. And, you know, <laughs> I hold on to it in many seasons, but mm -hmm. trust in the Lord with all your heart. There it is, there right? Lean on not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him, and he will make your path straight. What do you mm -hmm. see in that verse that's helped you? Trust in with all, not yeah. just some, but all your heart and don't lean on because my understanding says fix it. Right. And his is like, okay, I'll do better. Yeah. That's so, so yeah. good. That's so good. Well, yeah. I can relate to wanting to fix things, mm -hmm. but knowing that God's <laughs> way is always better. Yes. Well, after the break, uh, Danielle experiences the love of God and learns what life is like free from pain. Watch this. In whatever circumstance you face, God wants you to have victory. It's not too late. Believe that God wants to do a miracle in your life. And if you need to talk with someone who understands, all you have to do is call us at 1-855-759-0700. A prayer partner is waiting to listen and pray with you today. I started to hate men at this time because every time I was hurt, it came from a man. Danielle Williams believes she had good reason to hate men. It began when a daycare provider's son repeatedly molested her starting at eight years old. He instilled that fear. If you tell, this is what's going to happen to you. And he would hit me. He would physically abuse me. I was scared of him. And then I was like, well, if I tell, maybe I'll get in trouble. So I didn't say anything. She lived with her father after her parents divorced. And she watched him routinely beat every girlfriend he had. He eventually turned that rage onto Danielle adding him to the list of men she hated. He picked me up by my throat, he lifted me up, and he threw me down to the floor. He beat me so much that I passed out. 
Danielle's father went to jail for child abuse and she went to live with her mother in Los Angeles. There, a man in the neighborhood began to invite young Danielle over to his house. She loved the attention from him until the day he raped her. I knew that I hated men even more, even more. Because now I'm 12 years old and I had already been molested at eight. My dad tried to kill me when I was 10. And now this man who I trusted just raped me. I hated, I hated men. But years later, Danielle's attitude towards men softened. When she was a teenager, she fell in love for the first time and thought he was in love too. So this older man is telling me everything that I wanted to hear and more. I just wanted to just be his. After the first time she slept with him, the man told her he was a pimp and wanted her to be his prostitute. Danielle was devastated and refused. Then she discovered she was pregnant with his child. Every time I get with a guy, something bad is happening. I, I'm done. Then you tell me I'm pregnant? I'm 13, I'm in the eighth grade. What am I gonna do with a baby? And the baby's father is a 27-year-old pimp. Danielle delivered prematurely, and the baby died within hours. It was over. As far as me caring about life, me caring about myself, me caring about men, oh, men was out the question. I, I was done. I hate, oh, my rage. It, it was a rage that I had for men. The, the sight of, of men made me sick. A friend convinced her she could manipulate and control men by stripping. She started dancing in nightclubs and prostitution quickly followed. She pushed away any thought that what she was doing was wrong. Even though she had been raised in a church, she had no moral convictions. I didn't care. I knew who God was. I knew that what I was doing was wrong, but I didn't care. I hated men and I thought this was a way to repay them. That's how I looked at it. I'm getting them back for them hurting me. And I felt like I had the upper hand now because before you guys had the upper hand and you were hurting me. Now the roles have switched and that's how I looked at it. One day, Danielle was invited uh, onto the set of a porn film in Hollywood. And I saw the check that was written out to one of the girls there. And I said, that's what you got for doing that? Where do I sign up? because I was making a lot of money as a dancer and as an escort already, you know. But with the porn, I looked at it, that would be an even better way for me to make even more money. And I said, okay, let's go for it. After so long, it became normal. It became cool that I was a porn star. Danielle continued as a call girl as well. And one night she accepted a client who turned out to be a psychopath who wanted to kill her. Open the door! And for three weeks, that man came in there and he raped me and he beat me and he told me over and over again, I'm gonna keep you. You're not leaving here. And I believed it. I knew that I was supposed to die. And every day I got weaker and weaker and weaker to the point where I just gave up. I collapsed to the floor and I wept and I wept and I wept. But I laid there and I cried so much that I, I couldn't speak. And I got my words together and I said, Lord, if you get me out of this, I'll change my life for you. Don't let me die like this, not like this. I'm 19 years old. He had to get me to that point to show me that I'm God, I'm still God. It's me and you. And at that very moment, I got my salvation. Danielle prayed to accept Jesus Christ. A few days later, a man overheard her crying and helped her escape. She immediately severed her relationships with anyone in the sex industry and started going to church. Surrounded by new friends, Danielle's life began to change. I was starting to fall in love with Christ. And the more I did that, the more he started to purge me and deliver me and heal me. The more I reached out to him, the more he worked in me. Everything that I didn't have, the relationship with my mother, the relationship with my father, the hurt from men, he filled every void. Danielle is now in ministry full-time, sharing the love of Jesus Christ. There's no sin too big or too bad for Christ. And when everyone else leaves you, he'll never leave you nor forsake you. And I'm a living witness 
a walking example of what Christ can do in somebody's life. Your will and the next generation. Creating a will can teach the next generation what it means to return to others what has been given to you. A well-crafted will can leave a lasting and meaningful legacy for generations to come. You can give your loved ones more than just money. You can provide them with the opportunity to learn valuable lessons like generosity, family responsibility, good stewardship, and wise tax planning. Advisors with Purpose can take you step-by-step -step through the will planning process in order to fulfill your dreams, your wishes, and your legacy. 700 Club Canada has partnered with Advisors with Purpose to offer you this free service. Contact us to get started at plan at advisorswithpurpose.ca. Hey everyone, I hope you're getting in the holiday spirit. And if you're not, no worries. I've got just the thing, the perfect chocolate cake. This is my husband's favorite cake and I feel like I was searching for this recipe my entire life, and I finally found it, and I'm so excited to be sharing it with you just in time for Christmas. Let's get started. Here's what you're gonna need for your cake. First thing you wanna do is preheat your oven to 350 degrees. Mine is already preheating. And let's go ahead and whisk together our dry ingredients, starting with three cups of flour the sugar, and I love this cocoa. You can use any kind of cocoa for this cake, but I prefer a dark, uh, a dark cocoa. I love this brand, it's called Goutard Coco Rouge. It, I mean, you just look how rich and dark it is, and it just smells amazing. It also makes great hot chocolate. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that in. Our baking soda baking powder, and our kosher salt. And then we're gonna just whisk this together. This cocoa smells so good. I mean, you just, it really is a game changer, I think. This sort of makes your cake more of a dark chocolate cake than a milk chocolate cake. Okay, let's go ahead and add the wet ingredients now to our dry ingredients. This is one cup of the warm water, one cup of oil, Add the melted butter. And I don't really want this to ruin my shirt, so I'm gonna get this all mixed in. And then we're gonna use a mixer on medium speed. And this is definitely not how you do it. Whether you, know, you don't use a whisk as you do this. You use a spoon. Okay, so don't do this at home. This is not what you do. You don't use a whisk to combine everything. You can use a wooden spoon, it's better. I know there's a beautiful red for Christmas stand-up mixer on my counter, but I, I'm just used to my handheld, you know, burns a few more calories. You're gonna be eating chocolate cake, so combine everything on medium speed for a few minutes. So now we're gonna add the eggs one at a time, five eggs in this cake. <sighs> Egg number two. Good crack. We are making a cake. I just wanna, I wanna bathe in it. I just wanna drink it. Three fourths cup of warm water. <laughs> Our very last wet ingredient is the vanilla. And now we are gonna mix for another two minutes. So your batter will be watery, just like this. Sort of like pudding before it sets. So don't be alarmed, it's supposed to look like this. Now it's time to take the batter and pour it into your already prepared pans. So that should look like this. Uh, you've taken your butter and you've lightly buttered and then take some of your um, extra cocoa and just sprinkle it around. And then you know how it goes, you just put it over the sink and lightly dust your pan with some extra cocoa goodness. Now we are going to 
pour this in evenly. It's always a guessing game, isn't it? Gonna just be conservative on that first one so you don't over pour. Okay, let's put them in the oven at 350 degrees for 40 minutes. Okay, great. Now we are gonna make this amazing frosting. I think this is probably the best frosting I've ever had. Here's what you're gonna need for your amazing chocolate frosting. So you start with your butter and make sure it's at room temperature. I had to microwave mine a few seconds to get it nice and gooey like this. Then you're gonna add your honey. And in order to get all of this out, I'm gonna use this little baby spatula. Powdered sugar goes in. And I have found that I often need a little bit more honey or a little bit more powdered sugar to make it perfect, but you'll just have to do the taste test. Then add your cocoa powder. and your fourth a cup of warm water. I like and you want to combine this until it's really smooth for about two minutes. All right, even before we add the cream, I'm just gonna see how we're doing on the sweetness. Hmm, we might be right on the money today. I don't think I want to do anything different. Okay, great. Now it's time to add in our cream. Up. So you just want to beat it now until it's fluffy and creamy. And we are almost there. Now we just need to put it on the cake. All right, now for the fun part, the frosting. Our cakes have cooled, and now we need to cut the dome off of one of our cakes. I'm going to choose this one because it's not too pretty. And I'm going to just slice this so it makes it easier for frosting. All righty, and now I'm gonna move this over to our nice Christmassy cake stand, and we are ready to frost. Okay, I love a lot of frosting in the middle so that every piece has tons of frosting throughout. All right, let's go ahead and get this top layer on top there. And what I love about this cake, it's really a showstopper. I mean, look how tall it is. I've never made a cake that came out this fluffy. So I just, I love how it looks. And, and I, I just love knowing that dark chocolate is a superfood. And, and this cake is not that sweet. So I'm not saying it's a health food, but I'm not saying it's not. Anything that makes you this happy is a health food in my opinion. And here it is, isn't she lovely? Let's uh, go ahead and cut into this amazing, wow, this thing is so deep. And again, this is my favorite chocolate cake recipe that I've ever made. And I think it's gonna be yours too. Your family is going to love it. There it is. I know you're dying for me to take a bite, so I'm, I'm gonna oblige you. I don't want you to suffer at home, so I'm going to just try this. Mmm. Chocolate on chocolate equals heaven equals Merry Christmas from my house to yours. I'm getting hungry, I don't know about you. I like chocolate cake, so uh, this Christmas we have so many reasons to celebrate, number one, because of Jesus. But it's also an opportunity to give, right? And actually it's better to give than receive, we all know it's true. And so what are you gonna give this Christmas? Can I invite you to give to 700 Club Canada? Become a monthly partner with us as we reach the nation with the good news of Jesus. No better gift out there. Pick a level that reflects what you're able to do. And as a thank you gift, we're gonna send you the 10 laws for success and a corresponding workbook free just as a thank you. You're gonna learn so much through this series, but we thank you 
for saying yes to partnership, yes to giving to 700 Club Canada, uh, just call us at 1-855-759-0700. And Merry Christmas. Get 10 Laws for Success from CBN. Featuring Pat Robertson's signature book, plus a brand new study guide. 10 Laws for Success will give you the tools you need to live with godly purpose and power. Learn how to practice life-changing principles such as the laws of use, change, and responsibility. Put the laws of God's kingdom to work in your life. Get 10 Laws for Success today. Call or go online now. We certainly know, uh, noticed today and be reminded that knowing Jesus mm -hmm. changes everything in your yes. life. Yes. And the impact of following God gives you great courage to do mm -hmm. and to be the person that God called you to be. Absolutely. Right? What does it do? What does it mean to you to follow Jesus? Well, my scripture, my go to is the people who know their God shall be strong and do exploits. I love and that. so because I know who I am in him. Yeah. I don't have to second guess and I don't have to worry about whatever is happening around me because first and foremost, he is my peace yeah. and he is my strength and he's my joy. Yeah. He is my everything. And so that's what it is in a nutshell. Yeah. And you know what? If you want strength today and confidence, get to know Jesus, yes. like follow God with all of your heart. Mm -hmm. And we're going to pray right now. In fact, one of the prayer requests I have is that a family would come to know Jesus. Yes. And I don't mean know in your head. No. I mean, really know him personally. Mm -hmm. And also a uh, recent procedure someone had. So we just pray in the name of Jesus healing over this individual who had this procedure done. And Lord, I pray salvation for the yes. entire household of this family mm -hmm. in the powerful name of Jesus, that they would intimately come to know you in Jesus name. Amen. 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 And mine is the same for the salvation for our children and for godly wisdom and salvation for our children and grandchildren. Mm -hmm. And so, Father, we agree and we thank you that you are the one that is drawing these people to yourself. Because you said if you don't draw them, they can't come. So thank you for drawing them to yourself today and leading them, Father, and just changing their lives so that they can have that relationship that we have with you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you have a prayer request, go to 700club.ca, send us your prayer request or send in your ornament and know that you'll be prayed for. Uh, Romans 10, 9. Yes. Go ahead. If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. There it is. There it is. Well, know that you're loved today and say yes to Jesus. Thanks for watching. To contact us, visit 700club.ca. On the next 700 Club Canada, prayer helps deliver the ultimate Christmas gift and a woman breaks free from addiction at a ministry that you help support.